everybody, welcome to week two. Or welcome back, I guess, to week two of Throwback Thursday. So last week we played FTL, a game that I have not revisited in quite some time, but we're going even further into the Northern Lion Vault. Not the Northern Lion Bank, because that makes me think of my Spank Bank, and then that's a whole, you know, can of worms. Like, literally, it's just a, a whole can of worms. In any case, we're playing Dungeons of Dreadmore. This is a game that I previously did, like, two episodes of a Let's Play of, and then technical difficulties made it a little bit uncooperative. Uh, but I've always wanted to go back, because this is exactly my style of game. It is a roguelike. If you're going to yell at me for using the term roguelike improperly, this is the mo most roguelike-ish of basically anything I've played on the channel. Uh, at least with any sort of regularity. We're gonna get started here. Uh, we're gonna play on Dwarvish Moderation with Permadeath, because that's just, you know, standard. Uh, going rogue is far too difficult or far too difficult for me. Elves just want to have fun, makes me think of Cindy Lopper, and then we're back to the whole spank bank thing, and I don't necessarily want to go down that road. So what's really cool about Dungeons of Dreadmore relative to a lot of modern roguelites, or roguelike-ish games if you're, you know, of that persuasion, is that we have a variety of different weapon masteries and spells and classes that we can possibly take. And we get to take six of these, uh, and we can mix and match them every single time as we see fit. So we can also just random if we wanted to. So we randomed here, we got, you know, archery, which gives us combat bonuses for uh, using bows and whatnot. Uh, dual wielding allows us to have two weapons. Berserker Rage allows us to get more powerful as we attack. Flesh Smithing allows us to make, like, real golems, basically, out of flesh and meat. Uh, magic Training, Fungal Arts, obviously makes us a, a master of mushrooms. And Alchemy, which allows us to create potions. Since I am bad, uh, what I am probably going to do... Can I, I need to clear these out, maybe? Yeah, we'll just get these out of here. Uh, is focus on some of the more simplistic things. And I imagine I will probably die a couple of times over the course of this Throwback Thursday, so we'll get a chance to mix and match if I, had, if I uh, had to imagine. Why don't we take Sword Mastery, uh, and we'll focus on using swords. Seems like a relatively common weapon. Uh, we'll take something that allows me to see traps. Yeah, so Perception allows me to see traps and hit enemies better. Works for me. Laywalker, you can tap into invisible lines of force, or lines of invisible force to quickly regain magic power. Doesn't seem useful for a man of my stature. Uh, what about Assassination? Deal critical blows more often, that's passive. I can handle that. Isn't there a, a, vamp a vampiric one? Yeah. You do not heal naturally and gain no benefit from food, but instead regain health by killing things. That actually seems like something I do not want. Um, let's see if there's anything else in here that maybe appeals to me, for at least my first run here. Dual wielding might be useful. Um, let's take Berserker Rage. So we basically we get stronger the more we get attacked. We'll take Artful Dodger as well, which makes it more likely for us to dodge. Sorry, we don't get to take six, we actually get to take seven. Um, smithing, seems like, smithing and tinkering seem a little advanced for me. Uh, maybe we'll take Master of Arms, which means we get more effective armor. And sure, Viking Wizardry, why not? And, and let's get done here and, and get started. So I will be uh, Roll Fizzle Beef. I wonder what the character limit here is. Uh, roll Fizzle B! Not the bees, they're in my eyes, etc., etc. Maybe we'll name ourselves John Eyebrows. Just seems appropriate, doesn't it? Alright, so now we should be ready to go. So, basically the premise of the game, it's a dungeon crawler. We're gonna try to get to the end and kill Dreadmore himself, who is this guy who has like a ninja star on his head. I, you don't want to know where the other uh, two prongs are in any case. Let's just get started here, uh, because the backlog is somewhat irrelevant. Alright, so it has been a while since I have played Dungeons of Dreadmore, so I am a little bit concerned. But hopefully we'll be able to make this work. So, this is, um... Again, a, 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 basically, if you see me play Sword of, the, Sword of the Stars of the Pit, this is kind of a similar uh, game to that. So let's pick up our glasses here on the ground. Uh, and we can put those in our inventory if I actually open this up. Or we could actually put them on our character, I believe, as well. So why don't we put them on our character like so. There we go. So we've got some sweet glasses. What do they convey? Two armor. Wait, you mean everything isn't supposed to be all blurry? That's how I felt. I, I didn't have glasses until I got to the fifth grade, and then I was like watching TV with my parents, and they're like, what? or I asked them, I was, we were watching the Super Bowl or something, and I was like, what's the score in this game? And they're like, uh, you can't see that? You're sitting like two feet away from the TV. We actually said, of course, two meters, because we're living in uh, Canada, where I've lived for my entire life. Anyway, let's pick up this loot fisk uh, as soon as possible. I think I'm going to play with like a modified style here. Um, oh, we actually have an enemy. Okay. Do I have a weapon equipped right off the bat? Oh my god, it has been so long since I played. Good, so we do have a wooden sword, uh, and we should just be able to go and attack this dude right now. So we're attacking a blobby. He's gonna hurt us, we're gonna hurt him, and it's all good. And it kind of works like uh, desktop dungeons, actually, uh, in that... Am I actually... Have I just been eating the loot fisk that we've gotten so far? I believe there's an easier way to just pick this stuff up and put it straight in your inventory, but this is fine as well. Um, sorry, lutefisk, not lutefisk. But yeah, it's like... Um, 
uh, desktop dungeons where I believe as you move around you also uh, regenerate some health, which allows you to kind of plan your attack more accordingly. So we have a plastic ring. I do not believe that this is going to be much help for us, but at least it gives us one bit of armor. And basically, we're just going to go through our dungeon here, and we're going to, you know, pick up some gold, we're going to pick up some adventuring gloves, and we're probably going to get killed uh, maybe a level or two down, but I'm excited to have a chance to go back into this game anyway. It's also a convenient time. All right, we got some bolts. Amazing. Uh, it's also a convenient time for us to... Uh... Oh, there's where the Ludifisk was going. In there. I apologize for my ineptitude right off the bat, but the, the guys who made this Gaslamp games... Uh, they're coming out with Clockwork Empires, which is their new game. Uh, the trailer for it just came out. It looks kind of like a sandbox survival game, but also inspired by HP Lovecraft stuff. So, as someone who, you know, is deathly afraid of jellyfish, that's, uh, convenient. This diggle just came out of nowhere. That's also, you know, the, the game inspired, or not inspired, sorry, but, uh, popularized these diggles, I think, which are some of the cutest and most horrifying creatures. Uh, that you will ever see in your entire life. So, you know, standard stuff, we can level up. Um, that's our experience meter right there. We also have mana. What's my ability? Power of Magic Steel. Thunder and Storm, with the triumph of your Magic Steel. This spell grants your attacks the power of lightning and defense against the same. That actually could be useful. So we're picking up some more food here. And this is kind of like the first roguelike, uh, or roguelike-ish game. Oh, I didn't even see this trap. Let's try to disarm it. What are our odds? 45% chance. This was XCOM. This will get us killed. Let's see. Hey, okay, let's try it again. Uh, and again. And there we go. So we got experience for disabling that trap. And we'll be able to pick up some meat as well. Um, I'm just going to move my inventory a little bit more over here so you can see more of the map. Um, so I believe I can just walk over top of it and then double click it and that'll pick it up. We've also got a helmet of Rough Iron Hjalmir. A roughly crafted iron helm for a roughly crafted Viking warrior. What is this? Gives us some bonuses. You know, it's probably better than the glasses at least. So let's pick this up and put that on like so. Okay. So we can also see our stats down here as we change them. So, for example, um, if I take this off, you can see my nimbleness gets better. And my something, some other things change here a little bit. Mostly I just like having the helmet on, even if it's actually worse. Uh, I do wish that it kind of changed the way that your character looked, but I understand that with so many, uh, like, permutations. I got hit by that? Okay, I understand with so many possible permutations, uh, that makes things difficult. But anyway, we're getting some good critical strikes here, which is nice. Mostly the, the reason I'm kind of glossing over um, the, the further mechanics of the game is because to some extent, I kind of feel like it's unnecessary to talk about it. Let's imbue our weapon with some uh, magical steel here. Or, sorry, with lightning. I think I have done that. We'll see. Yeah, that seemed to do an awful lot of damage. I am very nearly dead, but we can probably regenerate some health. Uh, probably shouldn't walk through the poison. Uh, but yeah, the reason I'm just kind of going over the... Uh, t oh, no. The total basics is because, you know, just for... An ep oh, God, stop walking over the traps! Uh, for just a series like this, it, you just need a light overview, I think, to understand what's going on. So we should probably eat something here. Um, let's eat a cheese round, a well-rounded cheese. I'm a little bit embarrassed that I just uh, figured out why that pun makes sense, but we'll eat that. Um, maybe right-click on it. There we go. Okay, so you got to right-click to activate it. I definitely do not think I actually activated my Viking Steel last time, so let's try this. All right, that should actually work now. I don't know. I can't quite tell. We should have gone through the tutorial in all honesty, but anyway... I don't use any of that filthy pagan magic anyway. By the way, the way that healing actually works is that you actually have to eat something in order to get healed. So I'm very nearly dead again, but we did get Berserker Rage back. Um, and did I seriously like not put the armor on my chest? It's a Leather Curious versus an Iron Breastplate. Uh, armor is three, armor is two, uh, but this conveys some other benefits. One, three, one, minus three, four, three. It's a little scary, but I, I think this is right. There's also a peasantly pitchfork over there. I should probably eat something. Why don't we take a second to eat this uh, fresh steak? And that should regenerate us over the course of the next uh, six turns, as you can see up there. Uh, another rough iron Hjalmir. We can potentially uh, trade that in for parts later. Um, I planned that poorly, but we should still be able to succeed here. We can eat that diggle egg, in fact. Um, are we going to be able to live through this? Almost certainly. Uh, yes, but it is a little scary. Okay, I'm starting to get my, my feet underneath me again. We got the Diggle Egg. We might as well eat it right now, um, just so we can uh, kind of get on with our lives. So we are looking for uh, a staircase to go down to the next level, a portal, if you will. Um, there's some equipment over there I would like to get as well. Now, hopefully we do not encounter anything too tricky. I should re definitely try to um, get some more traps going. Uh, or sorry, get some more traps diffused, because that actually allows me to one sparkling glove. I could be Michael Jackson! Um, 
I should try to get some uh, more traps disabled, just because that's a really easy way for me to gain experience. And I think with the, uh, like, perceptive uh, class perk that I took, I actually will have the option. Um, ooh, a, a potion that I don't know what it does. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll have the option to uh, do that and maybe succeed a little bit more likely anyway. Uh, and there's another Diggle Egg over here. All right, so I apologize. It was a little bit of a, a, a finicky start. But we can make this work now. So let's just continue moving onwards. These floors are oftentimes pretty big. Please tell me this locked door is not going to explode in my face. Uh, you can just skip a turn. Which might be a smart idea. That blobby was actually just staying super far away from me. Uh, and I killed it. Okay, so we have a shopkeeper here. Uh, Brax, what do you have for me? I have 96 gold. That is not enough. Sorry, 96 Zork mids. Uh, that's not enough for me to buy very much. I can buy the worst sort of... No, I can't even. I can buy... Hematite, which I could use uh, eventually for uh, some kind of crafting, but I doubt that I will get into that over the course of this. So, um, we can just hold shift and uh, sell our items, so we definitely don't want that. Um, I guess we don't want the Leather Curus. Hmm, what's my gold at now? 529, it's actually pretty good. Uh, and I'll sell the Bolts, and you know what, I'll sell the Hematite as well. And we'll keep, uh, we'll sell the Pyrite, and we'll use... Oh, we'll sell the diamond as well, but we'll keep everything else because this is stuff that I could potentially use. This is the first, uh, you know, roguelike -ish game that I ever played where uh, the potions had kind of like differential effects that were randomized and not really known until you got started uh, and actually tried it out for yourself. So um, we'll see what some of these do. They, they may end up saving our lives. They may end up killing us. But now we actually have a thousand uh, Zork mids. So we'll see if maybe we can uh, buy something here. Iron breastplate. Um, that's already what I'm wearing. I think the sandwich is very useful. What about this sword? Iron Dirk. It's a dagger class weapon. It's not a good pick for me, I think, because uh, I already have uh, I, I have sword mastery, so it's better for me to stick with the sword, I think. So I'll actually buy the uh, dire sandwich. We could just steal the options, or steal some of the items here if we wanted to, but I think that's a pretty terrible decision. This guy's going to kick my ass. All right. So um, we can look at our map up there in the top right corner and realize that um, still a long way to go, I would say, <laughs> before I can actually... Uh, feel like I've done my part on this floor, so uh, let's continue moving onwards. And there are ten levels, I believe. Some of these Dungeons of Dreadmore uh, matches uh, can sometimes be well, the matches is not the right word, like runs, I guess you could say. Uh, can sometimes be like over an hour long, which is tricky. Uh, like an over an hour to die on like the fifth floor. So you must learn a new skill from your skill tome to gain the full effect of your new level. Okay, so what should we take? Level two of uh, Sword Mastery gives us extra attack for sword, I guess. Level 2 of Berserker Rage. Oh, sorry, this gives us... Let me see. Damage scales to your burliness. It gives you a special attack. Or a chance to execute with H melee attack. That seems really useful. Um, when you defend, there's a chance that you'll become really angry, which also increases your attack abilities. What about level 2 of uh, Artful Dodging? Uh, you've read an article in the back of Adventure Monthly about this. Now let's see if it works. Theoretically turns a dodge into a counter attack sometimes. That seems really useful as well. Uh, armor... This skill allows you to tighten the straps in your armor so that you use it more effectively, but the bonus is lost if you get hit too much. I don't really like that. Uh, and then a Viking Mastery, which allows us to uh, stop enemies in their tracks. I'm going to take the one that allows my dodges to sometimes produce counterattacks. That seems really useful, actually. Beautiful. All right, and is there anything else that I'm missing here? I do not believe so. All right, so I'm just playing my PSP over here, apparently. Sorry, am I boring you, uh, John Eyebrows? One of these days, that door is going to break. This is another shop here. All right, well, I actually just kind of want to leave this one unless there's a really good... There's a good sword, or a sword at least. I definitely do not have enough money for it. That sword looks terrible. Um, I could get a pylon hat like I'm a zombie from Plants vs. Zombies or something. Uh, let's move onward. So there should be a way for me to get around up here, and this is all uncharted territory. So it pays to be a little bit more diligent, move a little bit more slowly so that you don't get hit by poison traps like I just did. I could have quite reasonably being killed there. Okay, so there is a trap over here. Let's try to defuse it. 45% chance. Oh, that hurt a little bit, but at least I'm still alive. Okay. So I think now uh, we're almost back to like the starting room. So we'll just open up this one. Oh, it was another trap. 45% chance. There we go. So we got some free experience there. Not a ton, but some. Ooh. I don't know what happened there, but it's a little frightening. Uh, so he did see me, which is unfortunate, but this is okay. We're still at above half health, which is all right. And hopefully we'll be able to dodge and turn some of these uh, dodges into actual counterattacks. We've entered Berserker Rage, and I've picked up a little extra gold. As well as uh, Dr. Sainin's New Style Pilsner. Fantastic. 
Uh, this brew puts no flavor or body between a man and his alcohol. I can appreciate that. What do we have here? 45% chance for success? Never tell me the odds! What the heck happened there? Anti-magic field. Your magical energies have been suppressed by an anti-magical force. Ah, big deal. Not like I use it anyway. And there we go. So some extra experience again. And uh, I might want to eat some Ludafisk here. Just so I can replenish at least a little bit of health. Is, is that not what Ludafus does? Oh, it only restores one health. Okay, my bad. Um, we'll eat this sandwich again at some point. Maybe we'll eat a, a plum first. This will give us one HP over the course of the next five moves, I think. Occasionally gave us two there, actually. So clearly I'm a little bit fuzzy on some of the mechanics in the game, but uh, at least we have discovered some new stuff up here. What is this? I maybe am going to regret standing here. Um, let me just figure out what's going on here. So, I have Shroud of Darkness. For some reason, you never noticed how dark dungeons are until now. They have noticed me! There is no question about that. Um, okay, well, let's give this a try, shall we? So, I've, I, it's right-click to cast the magic on yourself. Uh, I remembered that at the greatest possible time. And then, there we go. So now I feel a little bit more confident about this whole ordeal. And I do still have the lightning attack. For now. I guess it only keeps going as long as we're still hitting enemies, but that's fine by me. We actually picked up a gold ring there, which is an awesome uh, addition to our armor kind of set up here, so that's cool. And that room ended up not being as bad as I thought it was, plus I learned how to actually... Oh! Be careful, is that an anti-matter? Anti-magic field, sorry. Anti-matter field would probably be a little bit more uh, scary for me. Have they noticed me yet? I don't think so, so I should just be able to kill him instantly. Okay. So our health's good, magic not so much, but that's fine. Let's kick down the locked door and continue moving onward. So that uh, kind of pentagram on the ground there is a, uh, a portal that will carry me to some other random part in the dungeon, which maybe I don't want to bother with right now. Blobby is running away from me, which is probably a pretty smart decision. We actually can't see him, but uh, take my word for it. He's there. Dare I say, this is going a little bit better than I had originally expected. Uh, it started out a little rocky, but we're now... Sorry to put some distance between myself and uh, these level 1 enemies. I would love to be able to find uh, the next floor. I also really love how um, the way that this magic works is if I'm not attacking, I don't get it, uh, or I start to lose it, but if I am attacking, then it lasts a little bit longer. At least that's the way it seems to be working, unless I am crazy. Um, like right now it's at 3 out of 6, 2 out of 6, 1 out of 6. Then it just goes back to 6 out of 6. Long story short, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, I guess. So we broke that statue of uh, Dreadmore and picked up some extra easy-to-get experience as a result. Got some more Pilsner, which we'll just stack up in our inventory. What about these bronze greaves? I did not have any greaves, did I? No. So we'll just put those on there, and hopefully that'll be good for us. Wooden sword. What do we have? Wooden sword. These are exactly the same, but I guess I'll pick it up because it only takes one spot in the inventory, and I can maybe sell it. Uh, and let's drink from the fountain. Sure. This could give us a crazy effect as well, but I think this time it actually just healed us, which is quite nice. So we'll continue walking around here. Uh, I think I've done a pretty good job of seeing what's on this floor. A grunge ear mushroom. That sounds like something I would not want to eat, but I'll pick it up regardless, because, you know, who am I? Um, let's open up this treasure chest. What is this? Uh, another ring, which will replace my plastic ring. Let's take a quick look at the effect here. A sturdy steel ring is studded with solder. Sure, that seems uh, acceptable. Uh, that blobby just... I just fed the cheese to the blobby, I think, by accident. Um, still fine, though. We'll pick up this ingot. And there's also some kind of very fiery-looking potion here. Probably tastes like cinnamon and whiskey, if I had to guess. Um, and there's a potion of radiance, which I believe... I mean, basically, I'm saving these potions for later. Um, because at some point... I am assuming that I will be able to use these uh, to greater effect than right now. So we do have a, a simple wooden shield, which I can now pick up and equip on my person, which will increase my defense, presumably. I wonder if the way that this uh, actual um, magic works is that every time it runs out, it actually takes one of my mana, and that's why I'm at, like, zero mana now. Um, and then when I run out of mana, it's gone. So maybe it's important to be more prudent about this in the future. It, it actually does not have... Maybe I can turn it off. Is that the way that we do it? Oh, there you go. So all you have to do is turn it off. You can just walk over it. Okay, so we'll sell some of the stuff that I don't need here, uh, including the ingots. I'll keep all the potions. And what do we have here? Some axes, a shield, uh, concussion bomb. Could be interesting, but I'd rather save my uh, my currency for now. So why don't we check out one more room? There is the staircase to go up here, but uh, why don't we check out one more room instead, which may give me the opportunity to get some treasure that will actually be useful on the next floor. 
seems pretty useful so far. We found actually a special treasure chest, which contains Navuram, the Cosmopolitan Lotus. It is a shield, large, shiny, and spiky. It's the buckler that helps you fight back. That seems incredibly useful, actually. Let's get our inventory back up. So now we can sell this simple wooden shield because I think we've got something that's a little bit better. Truth be told, I would say that our first floor here went pretty well. This only sold for 19 Zork Mints. I am a little bit disappointed in that. Uh, can I actually do something with the bookshelf? Yeah, we can search it for something. Uh, oh, an omnipotent pork sword. How did you know what I nicknamed my genitalia? Seriously, though, um, we're not going to be able to use this uh, unless I remember that recipe, I think. Or if I could look in my uh, recipe folder. I can't remember if you get one of those from the start or if that's something that you get if you're a specific class. So we moved down to the next level. On the next level, I expect that things will become uh, a little bit more difficult here. I mean, that's fairly standard, is it not? Uh, there's a blobby over there that's just kind of hanging out. But I think, you know, after a fairly rough start, I probably should not have just walked on the trap. How about uh, defusing it? Nope. Uh, maybe one more try. Uh, I'm berserking. There we go. Finally got it. I can afford it uh, to lose health right now. Although, obviously, I will want it in the future. Various kinds of cheese. Uh, helping me out here. Getting a little bit stronger. Our... Ooh, this is... What the f... It's a vegetable. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really look like a vegetable, but for sure. Um, with, I mean, I believe that thing around it kind of means that there's something to do with this square that's important. Okay, so this guy is not even woken up yet. I am going to cast uh, my Viking Rage. Oh, I have insufficient magic. Oh, it costs us 13 mana. Okay, that's fine. We'll just kill him the uh, old-fashioned way then, and I'll take a little damage in the process. Ooh. I'm actually taking a lot of damage in the process. Uh, am I still getting hurt by this? I think I am. Let's do some attacking here. This is a frightening prospect. At least he walked through the poison there. And this is actually an electric uh, blobby. This is scary. Uh, but it's it's interesting that it's electric, because if I could actually cast my magic spell, uh, then that would be useful for me. So why don't we... Um, I don't really want the Lutefisk. Maybe we could uh, eat the cheese round instead, and then we'll regenerate uh, 11 health as I kind of walk around here. All right. Now, um, there is a, a special monster in here, which scares the shit out of me. Where are you going? Okay, I'm gonna cast my magic so that I can actually hit this with lightning. Uh, and I am not being hit, which is very... Yeah, okay, so this thing actually allowed me to level up. Uh, I think we should probably level up Sword Mastery just so that I, you know, I'm not really using my magic that often, which is pretty obvious, so I might as well go for some passive uh, attack benefits. We got some Mudwen. Uh, that is another name of a mushroom that I would never eat in real life. What is this? A fiery wand with 13 charges left. I am like completely um, oblivious to all of the traps that are like firing at me as I'm making my way through here. Let me take a sip of water as uh, my throat gets a little parched here. So right now, I'm, I'm getting a little cocky. I'm wondering if it's going to be like FTL, where I was like, Hey guys, I don't remember how this game works. And then, you know, all of a sudden, uh, I end up actually doing surprisingly well. At least, you know, relative to... Mm, sure, let's bash open the chest. Uh, we got another new style Pilsner, which I'll just stack up in my inventory. And some Grog. Um, it restores spell points. What is this? Is this Grog as well? Oh, this is Sewer Brew. Also used for spell points. Um, excellent. So those are our mana potions, effectively. So, our passive uh, sword mastery actually did help us out there. We got a pressure plate. What's really cool about this game, and what you will never see as long as you watch me play it, is um, all of this... Ooh, come on. There we go, I got him to walk over me, which is good. And I can continue using my own lightning spell. Um, can I turn off the lightning? Ideally, I would like to, uh, but maybe I don't have the option. Okay, so this is a lightly injured electro blobby. I should be relatively immune to its lightning attacks, which is good. All right, and we got some more heroic vandalism. If we can level up a couple more times, I'll feel pretty good about this. But yeah, what I was going to say is that there's all sorts of, like, crafting and, and recipes and these elements of the game that I will never touch because I am mad because I'm bad, but uh, are probably maybe not essential, but pretty important if you want to have any chance of success. Uh, so let's keep walking through here. Also, please. This dimensional key bears a mysterious legend. Property of Mordred the Promethean, banned by the Geneva Convention, specializing in new and used dimensions. Click the dimensional key widget on your status bar to visit your personal pocket dimension. What is this, like SCP or something? I am concerned. Anyway, while well, we're here, why don't we disable that blade trap? No problem. We got some lock picks as well. Uh, a dwarven boomerang, which I'm not interested in. I could really use, like, a better uh, weapon. I, I realize there's enemies over there, but I just wanted to farm up this stuff first. But yeah, anyway, you're never going to see any of that high-level stuff as long as you're watching me. So I guess what I'm saying is, stop wasting your time with some with a dude like me. You deserve better. 
Uh, but I'm sure there are people out there who are substantially better at this game. I am playing this game for my own amusement. So we got a uh, robe, which we can use for our torso. We got lederhosen. Um, I'm just seeing how this affects my stats. With the lederhosen, my nimbleness gets a little bit better, and I think it's the only thing that changes, so we might as well stick with it. Uh, I believe nimbleness increases our dodge chance, so what do we have going on up here? Uh, just Oh, that's a staircase up, right? This is back to level one. I don't want to be on level one again. Let's go back down to level two. That's where the fun is. Um, so this is kind of like a you know the long and winding road here. That is death itself. He hasn't noticed me yet. I think it's fair to say that he probably has now. Let's just wait around for him to come up here and hopefully I'll be able to kill him. Otherwise, oh, he only does two damage. I'm not scared of death. Like, quite literally, because he was pretty easy. Uh, I've got to enter the pocket dimension before I die. There's no question about that. Um, just do I want to do it right now? I'm not sure. I've read the SCPs with the pocket dimensions. You know, SCP, not my favorite thing in the world, but those are nightmare fuel. Um, sure. That did not work. Uh, I'm getting uh, about halfway to leveling up to the next level. Both of those traps uh, backfired on me. We might as well open the coffins here. Can we? Maybe not. Uh, what about this on the ground? Got a, a music change which scared me. Okay, enter the pocket dimension. Let's do it. What's going on in here? This is level minus one. Um, I, I guess... Whoops. Okay. I guess this is where you could, like, go to craft things if you're, like, really overwhelmed. Or you could just, like, leave items on the ground in here so it, like, vastly increases your inventory or something. I guess. Um, we can't go back to it for 30 turns, so I pretty much wasted it, but uh, shit happens, I guess. So we're gonna be able to get a critical hit on death. Hit. And one more hit and he'll die. This is going pretty well so far, I gotta say. What is this? An emerald. A gem rolled, as Michael L. Fox would say. Let's pot or sorry, J. Smith OTI would say. You know, they, they say some similar things sometimes. Let's get this lockpick in our inventory. And unfortunately, we've reached a dead end. I do believe there were some doors that I did not pay attention to. So yeah, well, plenty of them, actually. The one down here, for example, should open up a decent supply of new material for us. And we'll try to level up again. We got some coal. Most of this stuff is just going to be sold because, again, I am um, not an expert crafter. So... Uh, oh, we actually did find an exit to go down to the next floor, which is pretty important because if we can get down to level 3, that's quite honestly better than I thought we would do over the course of this. What did I get there? Oh, another anti-magic field. Okay. Not that big of a concern, I guess. I really feel bad for these diggles. I mean, let's be honest. They're just protecting their eggs, and I'm coming through here like, Yep, okay, we're going to eat this one, we're going to eat this one. I'll save that one for later when I'm hungry. Um, but still... I will eventually need those. We have seven Diggle eggs now. I'm just doing a little bit more exploration because, you know, going down to the third floor is a little bit scary. On my series, I think the furthest I ever made it was like the fifth floor, the sixth floor, so we're slowly approaching that. And I would say that I'm doing a pretty good job of beating these guys to death. This is a... I'm glad I came down here. This is a busy room. Let's put all the stuff in our inventory first. Uh, especially the Michael Jackson glove, and then we'll let these blobbies get close to me, unless they choose not to, in which case we'll come close to them instead, and just cut them up. So, uh, we should just be able to kill this one as well. The, really, the increased chance of critical hits is helping me out a great deal here. So we got a shiv, that is another dagger-class weapon. I don't want to step on the pentagrams, because again, remember that that, uh, actually puts me in a... Seriously, there we go. Finally, I just basically used uh, my puzzle-solving skills uh, to force this guy to walk into me instead of the other way around. Because uh, I don't want to lose my initiative. And we could pull, could pull that lever and something uh, surprising will happen, but in any case, open his chest. An apple! That is useful. You know what they say? Apple a day means uh, you never have to go to the dentist, right? Uh, we should probably stack up the grog in our inventory. There is no reason to take up so much space. I'm sorry, that's not grog even, that's uh, sewer brew. Okay. We got a bronze curus that this actually seems pretty awesome. And what's this on the ground over here? Maybe nothing? I can't tell. Um, and we'll break the Statue of Dreadmore. Hey, we leveled up as a result. Okay, so I am glad I came through here again. So, sword practice. You occasionally deal a crippling wound. Berserker Rage actually seems pretty useful again. Uh, we can also learn Leap. We could get Suit Up. Um, I think we'll get the second level of Berserker Rage, actually. Berserker Rage is something that's seemed to have worked out pretty well for us so far. Um, I can't walk through this way. We can pull the lever. I don't know what happened, though. Uh, okay, so let's talk about our equipment now. 
So we have uh, pirate training breaches. How does that armor compare to the leader hosen? Oh, I've been wearing the bronze greaves this whole time. Not the leader hosen. Okay, well the leader hosen is the highest armor of all of them. That's my mistake. Uh, and the bronze cuirass seems way better than the iron cuirass. And then there is the sparkly glove, which gives us more magical power, I think. So we'll wear that instead of our normal greaves. And this is where I really wish that there was some kind of like superficial way to see the differences uh, in your armor because I think I would look goddamn ridiculous at this point. Alright, level three immediately seems exceptionally frightening. <laughs> right off the bat, I'm like, I regret this decision, but let's try it out. So we we stunned him. This genie scares the shit out of me. Um, how much do these guys hit for? Not that much. Mm, enough to scare me. But, please, okay, we did kill one there. Uh, what about the genie? 52 health, 43 health. Okay, so we'll go for the unfriendly AI first. And what's going on with this thrusty demon here? That's a sentence I never thought I would say. Okay, thrusty, or, uh... Ooh, okay, we'll start with the genie. I'm not being hurt that much yet. He's dead. And we're actually going to get a decent chunk of experience here. And I'm not going to die, which is nice. The fact that we're getting these stuns in here is so important. Please tell me you're going to die. There we go. That actually went way better than expected. Uh, so those are not trap squares. Good. We got a uh, cylinder of some sort and also some gold that I can use to probably sell, let's be honest. Uh, and beyond this, we have a lot of stuff to sell, but we also have a lot of potions. I hate sea animals. Uh, my health, he, he did a lot of damage there, but that's okay for now. Um, now we have uh, another large supply of enemies, so what I'm going to do quickly is just eat some cheese to regenerate some health. Uh, like so, and then we'll just kind of kite him around. Three, two, or sorry, three, two, one, and then we'll start attacking, our, or attacking him ourselves. Oh! This is uh, one of the better monsters. This is not just uh, your regular kind of monster. This scares the shit out of me. Um, okay, so let's... Uh, oh, we've got Berserker Rage, though. Your rage gives you extra strength and helps you ignore the pain. Um, How would I do this? I think maybe we should eat some more cheese. That's step one. We'll probably be hit. He crit me. Uh, that's bad news. Critted me? Crit me? I don't know. This would be a really nice time to be able to put down a trap. Please tell me these other monsters are going to catch up. I don't think I can beat this guy. I think I've like got to head up to the next level first and, and take some time to regenerate my health. Uh, so let's eat, our, let's eat our sandwich. This is going to take us basically exactly to full health. Uh, or maybe even slightly beyond it, which is apparently useless for us. And uh, maybe we'll do a little bit more exploration on the second floor here, because I really think that I have basically no chance of actually succeeding on the floor that I was just on. Oh, he can shoot me from afar. I did not know that. Um, so we might as well, you know, walk into him in this case. And is there any chance of us leveling up before we go down again? Almost certainly not. Hmm. We could go up to the first floor again, but I think at that point, or at this point, that would be overkill. Why don't we instead walk into this one and see what's going on in this room? Uh, we got a weird zombie. I don't know why, I, whenever I see like an exposed brain, I always, oh, well this one's actually called a zombie, okay. But whenever I see like an exposed brain, I'm like, yep, that's a zombie. Zombies normally, they want brains. They don't necessarily have exposed brains. Uh, so I did put on some new sandals here. Are these any better? Two armor. They, oh, they beat flippy floppies, okay. Acceptable then. Uh, let's close our inventory briefly. Oh, there's a trap there that I didn't stop to see. And we'll see if there's any items in here that will save me significant hardship on the next floor. There is death himself, yes. I remember you, and we will probably be able to destroy you relatively easily. What did I, oh, I, I got into my Berserker Rage there, that's fine. So we should slow down here, I'm walking a little bit too fast, and uh, am liable to miss some traps. This is what's important, this is a, uh, oh, let's, yes, defuse it. Okay, it hurt me, but I tried. Oh, that not as much as that one hurt me. Um, there's another entrance down to the next floor downwards, which is actually pretty substantial uh, in its importance if we are able to actually um, use that, because that means we might be able to avoid those enemies that were previously such a concern. All right, so we've been poisoned with acid. Uh, how about this one? Okay, we actually got one trap successful. Successfully, I should say. Okay, let's eat some grated cheese, get back our HP a little bit. Um, let's eat some aged blue cheese, get back our HP a little bit. What I was going to say is that uh, Dreadmore is kind of different than a lot of uh, other roguelike-ish games. 
in that uh, this one actually requires, and it, you know, a lot of rogue likes actually are like this, but a lot of like kind of modern rogue lights, you know, consider like nuclear throne or something like that. Please don't hurt me again. Oh, I'm so mad because I'm bad. Um, uh, a lot of them are, are kind of a little bit more faster paced. Dreadmore is neat and kind of a change of pace because it's much more slower. Oh, uh, or much more slow. Much more slower is very poor choice of words. We found an angel statue. We'll just murder this Diggle first. If I remember correctly, does this not give me... Diggle's just... What the heck, man? Diggle's... They're balling out of control. This thing just continuously spawns Diggles? What am I supposed to do here? They're just popping out of the ground. That's scary. Um, well, luckily I have enough HP to make this happen anyway. Okay, fuck that room forever. Apparently, every time you walk into that room, a Diggle spawns. Um, we got a Timberbane all-natural blade. Sounds like something you'd get from $50 Shave Club. Uh, okay, so we have a couple options here. I think first we should just eat some traditional food. We'll eat some cheese. I want to get back to full health, basically. This also has a secondary effect of cleaning out our inventory. Um, we get to eat the Lutefisk and get it out of our inventory. Like so. Um, is this, yeah, this actually does heal us, so we don't have to move for it. It does take an action, though. And, sure, this is nearly full health. And then I think we go down to the next floor. And basically, we're getting into um, territory where I'm not comfortable. Because I'm going to have to start drinking these potions. And I don't know what the effects of these potions are. Which scares the shit out of me. But if they're good, uh, well, I have many of them. If they're bad, then I will be mad because they're bad. Uh, Stony Wand? Or is that. Yeah, it's, I thought it was Stormy Wand. Help me, Stormy Wand Kenobi. You're my only hope. I don't even know what my hope actually is at this point. Um, what is this? Pinot Noir. Okay. Shows how cultured I am. Uh, we'll keep moving onwards. Gladiator sandals are what I already have on, but it's possible we could sell this at some point. We have nothing here. Battle mittens? Battle mittens like these are worn by Canadian warriors in their sacred war against the hosts of Hyperborea. That's the truth. I don't know if you guys want me to make fun of that. I'm not going to. Um, that's just what life is like in Canada when you spell it with a K. And we got uh, some more mushrooms. Inventory's getting pretty full up here. Can we actually walk around here? Uh, or is this completely off? Okay, it's off. Off limits, I should say. So we're on level three. I'm confused and concerned, but uh, we have a decent supply of, of cheeses of, of various kinds. Hopefully, um, I'll be able to use these to... Do I have age steak in my inventory already? I don't think I do. So I will just put it in my inventory. Uh, and we'll destroy the statue of Dreadmore, of course. Oh, I keep walking into these anti-magic fields. Uh, wait, there's another... Okay, there is, like, a shrine in that room. What the fuck is this? Stone Golem? He doesn't see me, so fuck everything. What's your problem, Cthulhu? Um, you have teethed zero pieces of loot fisk. Uh, I probably should have saved that loot fisk that I literally just ate. Uh, let's disarm this trap. That was pretty good, as you can see. Come on, Golem. Yeah, walk into the trap, you scumlord. There we go. At least I hurt him for four HP. Uh, all right. How do we handle this? We've already got our magic going. Let's let him walk over here and see if we can kill him. Yes, it, it appears we will be able to. I'll take some damage in the process. I'll take a lot of damage in the process. But we're fine. Okay, this is good. And we may come close to leveling up again. Pear wine. Um, we need to clear up some space in our inventory. We are pretty close to leveling up, though. Oh, I thought we were about to level up right there. Let's, let's drink the Potion of Radiance. I need more mana to drink it? Is that true? Or no, or maybe I just accidentally tried to cast magic. Okay, let's get something out of our inventory. Aqua Fortis, right click to drink potion. All right, what special ability do we get here? Acid burn. Minus four health per turn? Minus two health per turn. Okay, we can counteract this by eating a, a strong Danish. Um, please tell me I don't die. Lose one health, one health, one health. Okay, that Aqua Fortis was bad. What about Hyperborean potion? What does this one do? You have been infused with Hyperborean power. Cool. Um, I should probably eat something before I fight anything else uh, because I am scared. We'll get the Grog for sure. Um, and I should actually probably drink this Grog straight away to give me more magical, um, or more spell power, I should say. And we'll pick up our ingot press. Oh, do we not have space? It only takes up one block, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, and 
Upright books, it's an amulet. Sure, I could use some more armor, so we'll put this up in our amulet slot. Okay, do I have enough health to survive this attack? I do, yeah, okay, we will. And we should be able to level up. I can't remember if you actually get um, all of your health back when you level up in this game. It hasn't been an issue so far. Oh, I didn't mean to cast that spell on myself. Uh, it's fine though. And we'll pick up the enormous wrench, which seems like it would sell for a lot of money if I could ever find another uh, shop. Gladiator sandals we already have many of. Um, cool. Let's continue moving onwards. We've explored a lot of floor three. And this is already like, oh, we have a shop. Okay. So let's be smart about this. Uh, ingot press can go. Wrench can go. Is there a good sword for sale here? Hmm. Does not appear so, unless there's a dagger class. Is there a sword? Oh, there is a sword class weapon. Sure, we'll probably buy that because we're still using our wooden sword. Um, so we want to get rid of all equipment. First off, I think I just sold like a something I shouldn't have sold by accident. Uh, boomerang can go. Shiv can go. Crude stone axe can go. Uh, I don't necessarily want to sell the potions, but it might be a, a not the worst idea. Now we'll sell but we'll sell ingots. Um, do we have anything else that I want to sell here? Yes, flippy floppies. Sparkling glove. Probably fiery wands. And we'll sort again. Okay, so this is potions and food and, yeah, sure, things that we don't necessarily uh, know the value of. So let's let's get our, um, what's the difference here? 579. 579. These are the same, right? Or is one of them? Yeah, they're the same. Okay, so we'll buy this. The sword is edged with the obsidian prismatic blades. That seems like a decent pickup, in my opinion. Let's put this on our person, and we will quickly sell that wooden sword. And I'd say we're good to go now. We have 4,000 gold, though. We should really buy something else. Iron breastplate we've already had, uh, and we have something better now. Leather cap. We already, uh, none of this other stuff seems that great, um, for us personally, at least. Can I not walk out this way? Why can I not walk out of here? Brax! You really, you're messing with me, man! I can't walk. I'm trying so hard to walk to the right. Maybe you walk out this way? Yes, hello. Uh, you want her? Yeah, buy it. Okay, maybe I didn't buy something by accident. Did I try to... Oh, I picked it up without stealing... Or without paying for it. Okay, that's my mistake. And immediately we fail at disarming a trap right afterwards. Uh, okay, so we're opening up our door here. We got a better weapon. Come at me, alien scum. Uh, we'll cast the spell on ourselves. We have insufficient magic to cast the spell. Okay, that is indeed a problem. Uh, let us drink some grog quickly. All right, so now we're gonna regenerate spell power, and when we get to like 13, 13, when we get to 13, I'll cast the magical spell on myself, like so, and then we'll be able to attack this dude. Okay, I am I gonna die here? No, but it is gonna be close. All right, now if we could just level up like immediately, I would be a very happy man. Yeah, okay, we did. We actually did a counterattack when he hit us, I think. Or our shield just automatically made him take damage. Okay, so we're level four now. This has actually been a pretty good run, contrary to my normal skill anyway. So we learn Ancestral Body Paint. The markings of your ancestors will protect you. Sword Practice, which is another passive, which seems pretty useful. Yeah, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Let's uh, continue to go with uh, relatively passive offensive abilities that may make me a little bit more survivable here. All right, so we have a special blobby here who we will destroy. And we also have a barbecue. We can use that barbecue to cook meat, but I don't know if we have any raw meat in our inventory. We could barbecue some mushrooms. That would make us the weirdest man in the world. Looks like there's some kind of like mini boss or a dungeon boss in there. Is there anything on the barbecue? Nope. Okay. There is a weird octopus man here. So I'll kill him and submit him to Young Horses Studios. Who's this guy? Oh, no, he's just a standard demon. Okay, I'm not too scared then. Another hit or two, and he will be deceased. Is there still angry demon here? No, there's some kind of weird altar slash two-way radio. Um, Self-sealing self -sealing stem bolt. Okay, fair enough. I have no idea what that is. Flickering glass square. And what the heck is this steam machine down here? Is that Xbox One? Uh, I can't tell. All right, we'll just keep opening up the doors. Let me just make sure... Uh, that this little situation back here is, uh, oh, we might as well search the bookshelf. Okay. Staff of Immaculate Conceptualization. And we'll try to disarm this. It's pretty good. This takes us up. Okay. We can fight death immediately, but, you know, what's the point? 
we already know we defeat him. Uh, so we should just look for the door down to, um... Oh, there's another store. I'm not that interested, but... Oh, dude, that green armor actually looks baller as hell. Uh, but... Obviously a Doom reference. Obviously I don't have enough money for it either. Um... What could we go with here? This is a damn good question. There are some swords, but they seem worse than my existing weapon. Um, and I don't really have anything to sell. I guess I can sell like this steel ingot and this pressure plate and these materials. Uh, we'll sort this again. What is this? Okay, we can sell coal as well, even though it's worth like nothing. Uh, and we'll just walk out. It was fun while it lasted. Why is there all of a sudden an acid trap out here? And I hope we find our way down to the next level soon. Oh no! Okay. Um, we need to leave. Guys. I am such a goddamn idiot. If I had just walked the other way, I would have been fine, but instead I panicked, and now I'm trapped in this fucking, like, choke point, basically. The good news is I realized it just in time to hopefully fight one monster at, at a time instead of, like, 17 at once, but if I just gone to the left or the right, I could have survived this, but instead, again, like a dumbass, I just walked right out, uh, or walked right down this bridge, so we have to fight them one by one. Let's do it! I will, I will die here. Almost certainly. Uh, unless something miraculous happens. Because there's no way out of this. Oh, th of course the monsters can fucking fly. I've, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Uh, still can't walk out over here. Um, yeah, this is not good. There is a small chance of my success. I continue to be alive, much to my chagrin. Uh, the problem is I don't want to... I mean, I don't think the pocket dimension can help me. I don't want to eat food because it takes a turn and it's only going to heal me for one per turn. So, uh, maybe now's a good time to check out our inventory and see what kind of potions we have. What potion would be the leap? Potion of stealing. That probably makes it so we move less effectively. Potion of radiance. It's difficult to look directly at. That could be useful. Potion of invisibility. Ooh, that seems useful as well. Um, yeah, let's try the potion of invisibility. Okay, now we're invisible. For how long? No one can see you time to make your escape. Please tell me these guys are going to move out of the way. Did get get out of here, you scum lords. Oh my god. I actually I have 13 turns left. I I can't move though. Oh no. Oh my god, did they open up a space? these fucking blobbies if they just move there is a space open two left oh god I could kill the blobby and run what else do we have dire empowerment Ooh. let's let's attack the, the blobby I got hit a lot there he's dead though and now I can run oh but this guy's right on me again um what else do we have stealing radiance empowerment uh let's take a potion of radiance so have, have I blinded these guys? Is that what happened? You glow with righteous radiance. This helps you see in the dark, makes you feel smarter, and allows you to judge monsters with righteous fury. Oh my god, I think I blinded one of them. And can now run for my life. I uh, should now probably eat something. Oh, but they're gonna hit, they're gonna surround me and hit me if I do. It's okay. We'll just get up to the staircase on the next level, and we'll be good to go. Okay. Scary. But I think I can survive here nonetheless, even though there's a lot of diggles. Um, there's actually a ton of diggles. So I think I'm gonna survive for now. So what I'm gonna actually do is cut this episode here uh, and say thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And of course, if you enjoyed Throwback Thursday, make sure to show your support in the form of a like. It helps me out a lot. There will be a link to pick up Dungeons of Dreadmore on Steam if you're interested as well. And I imagine a lot of you probably will be. We'll be back on the next episode, picking up exactly where we left off. But again, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to stick around for part two and see how this run ends, because right now it's going pretty well. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.